Hi, this is Michael Leahy, Chairman of the Irish Freedom Party. Uh, I started my campaign in Waterford uh, yesterday, my campaign for the European Parliament elections, which will be held next June. And uh, while I started my campaign last week in County Clare, Waterford was the first major city that I went to. Uh, and I want to describe my experiences there, which are quite interesting. I started campaigning in the centre of town, and there was a rally to be held at 1pm, uh, uh, and I was going to, I was invited to speak at that, uh, which I did. Uh, by the time the rally had got started, we were confronted with the usual gang of leftists, uh, and it was an unusual combination, which I'll explain in a moment. But of course, the only thing they wanted to do was to stop us from speaking. They have absolutely nothing whatsoever to say, nothing to contribute to any debate, just meaningless slogans which you chant over and over again. <coughs> and they kept that up for perhaps an hour and a half or two hours. There's something like a human microphone. They have sort of sacrificed their humanity. Uh, they become microphones. And the only purpose of this microphone is, of course, to stop debate, to prevent debate from taking place. And they would use the right of protest to justify this. But it's got nothing to do with protest. It is merely uh, stopping somebody else from, from having a say. Uh, obviously, our party will get no coverage whatsoever from uh, the mainstream media. Uh, and we will no, get no coverage whatsoever from radio or television. So uh, the only focus we have is to go onto the streets. Uh, and the, uh, camp the tactic now used by these people is to make as much noise as they can to sound sirens and klaxons and so on and so forth. Um, now, it's, it's, uh, there was an interesting combination of people there. As I said, there was the usual shaved-headed uh, butch uh, women, uh, pink-haired women, uh, men wearing pink masks and high heels and, I suppose, a, a certain cohort of ordinary-looking people as well. But in addition to that, there was a very substantial um, immigrant uh, group there, mostly wearing, um, uh, waving, rather, Palestinian uh, flags and other Islamic paraphernalia. And it's, it's a quite extraordinary combination. The hard communist um, authoritarian left, combined with the hard Islamic fascist um, left, I guess you would call it, because the Ba'athist Islamic system is very authoritarian and is, is quite socialist. They have managed to find each other, these two forms of pond life have managed to combine together. Uh, and to unite together, but they're united only by one thing, and that is a hatred of Irish culture and a hatred of traditional Christianity, which they will propose to eliminate, and we really better watch out because that's what these people are intending to do. Um, as we were there with our tricolors, uh, there were people coming up to us, waving their Palestinian flag and saying, this is the future flag of this country. We will take this country from you. And when I say we, I think uh, we all know that I'm not uh, that the victors in this um, uh, demarche will not be the Irish left. Uh, it will be the Islamo-fascist uh, left. They are the people who in are intent on taking over this country. And of course, they're being uh, radically facilitated by our government, which, which is to import as many non-nationals into this country as possible to create a significant uh, Islamic uh, minority, which will then demand uh, the imposition of Sharia law and will eventually uh, force itself uh, into the politics of the country and into the legal system of the country. That's happening much more quickly than we realize. The Irish population, the Irish demographics are under severe pressure. And while this is going on, while we're suffering from demographic decline, while we're suffering from a um, severe housing crisis, the government is intent on bringing as many completely unvetted and unsuitable people into this country as possible. Uh, I was looking at um, people of Arabic origin, origin uh, cursing us and cursing our flag, um, trying to break down freedom of speech, which they obviously despise. And of course, from the side, and of course, as always, the gay flag and the trans flag were there in evidence as well, combined with the Islamic uh, symbolism. Um, and as I pointed out, they did not realize that, of course, the first people to be thrown off the high buildings uh, by the Islamists would be the, the, the gay people. Uh, so it, it really is a very peculiar uh, combination, a very peculiar marriage, I would say, marriage made in hell for themselves, 
but also for this country. Uh, after the meeting was over, um, I actually came back into the square. I was doing ordinary canvassing, getting a good response, a mixed response to people, but a good response. They're delighted to see a new party emerging. Uh, and I would say, while this, this mob were shouting their heads off, uh, a lot of people gathered around to see what was going on, and uh, it gave me an opportunity to go around and give out my leaflets to them, and they were promising me their number one, if for no other reason than they were, they saw that the people in opposition to us were absolutely despicable, and there was nothing to do with them. But anyway, after that, in the afternoon, I came back to the same square, John Rower Square. There was a small group of people uh, praying the rosary, so I decided I'd join in with them. And shortly after, uh, about halfway through, we were surrounded by a huge uh, cohort of Muslim people uh, dressed in traditional Muslim dress, uh, pr protesting about Palestine, waving Palestinian flags. But they showed absolutely no respect whatever to the people who were praying in public, uh, praying quietly. Um, you don't have to do that, but it's sort of good manners to have respect for people who are praying. You would you would uh, give them a bit of space and uh, try to remain quiet, but absolutely not. They completely surrounded us and started their chanting and their roaring and their shouting and their gesticulating. And when they were finished with that, I, I couldn't help noticing looking. They were looking over at us with an utter contempt, an utter contempt for people who would engage in Christian prayer. Uh, because I suppose they see that um, Christianity in Ireland seems to be very much on the wane and they see that as an opportunity for their uh, religious practices to take over politically and religiously. And um, it was quite sad. It was a sad event, um, almost surreal to see the small group playing the rosary and being surrounded by people in Muslim dress, screaming, gesticulating in Arabic and with Arabic signs. It was. Um, I guess, uh, a representation of the future of modern Ireland, if we're not careful. But it's not too late for us. We in the Irish Freedom Party will do everything we can to redress the mass migration into this country. We're, going to, we're aiming to do that initially through Europe. I'm running in Ireland South. Please make contact and please look at our website, look at our policies. We wish to uh, redress mass migration. Obviously, that would be a high priority for us. We also wish to uh, confront the issue of trans activism in our schools. Uh, and the pre um, age inappropriate sexualization of children in our schools, and there's a variety of other policies that we have. Uh, I would appreciate if you would look us up and um, give me your number one vote in Ireland South, which is a vast constituency containing all of Munster and much of southeast Leinster and parts of the Midlands. That's on June the 6th. Michael Leahy for the Irish Freedom Party. Please give me your number one. Thank you very much.